I think the first, the first aspect which I think needs the shift in thinking is, is perhaps our own thinking, um, thinking around how the city works, how the city will work into the future. And um, the word holistically is used a lot, but what that means is that uh, for a long time we've been perhaps trying to solve a particular challenge. Um, and when you look at the city as a whole, when you look at the complexity involved, when you, look, when you start asking the right questions, um, it's not to say that the water crisis goes away or that our food security challenges disappear. But when you start to ask the right questions and look at the city as a whole, you start coming up with the kinds of solutions, the kinds of processes often, which lead to solutions, which are actually quite different, uh, quite innovative, and actually address a number of complex uh, needs and challenges, particularly in South Africa's context, which is fast urbanizing. Um, we have some of the highest inequality in Cape Town and Johannesburg in the world in terms of income, uh, and start to address a number of these factors sort of concurrently and simultaneously. So I think a large shift in the thinking that is required is around the processes which lead us to the kinds of solutions. No doubt there's a number of technology uh, solutions out there. Um, there are a number of new companies and entrepreneurs forming. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, sort of amazing progress in terms of transport and mobility, uh, and we don't even really know what's coming next. So there certainly are solutions out there, but the kinds of solutions which come out of processes which are integrated, um, holistic, uh, and uh, future-focused actually give us things which yield multiple benefits to society. I think in the, in the water space, you know, of course we can look at the Dutch and how the entire country is, is dependent on, um, you know, dealing with water and managing water. Um, but in particular, I think uh, there are two examples which come to mind. The first is um, Singapore, you know, an island nation of 5.5 million people. Um, you know, 60% of the water supply in the 60s was coming from a different country entirely, uh, with political implications, of course, and they had a very determined prime minister at the time. And uh, they had to transform not simply where they get water from, but the entire sort of water governance process. So it's not a very, uh, you know, sort of glamorous topic, but the governance of water, who manages water, who controls supply, who sets the standards, was as integral as adopting different technologies. For example, in Singapore, uh, they only adopted desalination within the last 10 years. They only adopted the recycling of water in terms of how we reuse and recover water. Um, 20 years after they first tried it because of the price of doing that. Um, and so the technologies and solutions will come along, but how you govern that whole process, what the sort of societal commitment is to transformation is actually where you get the change. In New York, for example, after Hurricane Sandy, a different challenge with water, uh, you know, they were faced with, you know, we have the infrastructure budgets and we have this sort of national, federal level commitment to, to rebuilding infrastructure in New York, which is of course one of the iconic American cities. But if we do it in the exact same way as the past, if we rebuild our coastlines with the exact same walls and the same infrastructure, we'll end up in the same situation due to the increasing number in extreme uh, weather events. So they took a different approach and chose a, a design and planning process which invited firms from around the world to research the conditions and to respond with, with the kinds of solutions, be it public spaces along coastlines, be it growing their marsh and wetlands even further to sort of resist and delay and store water. So the entire process led to outcomes which um, are not perhaps the most revolutionary, you know, growing, expanding wetlands, building bus lanes and parks adjacent to coastlines. Uh, these are not uh, particularly groundbreaking. Uh, but when you, when you combine the right minds with a political commitment, uh, you start to come up with the right kinds of approaches which actually uh, provide a much longer term benefit in terms of how you deal with water. I think the role of business is to start seeing itself as a, uh, a cooperator and as a partner in, in, in the way cities work. Um, some businesses will choose other areas um, besides water, some will choose to work in the water sector. Um, water is essential to all life, that includes business, that includes government, that includes you know, all human life. And so um, for businesses to operate, for business to sustain into the future and to grow, um, they will have to become engaged in the water uh, challenge. And um, as we know, most businesses often see crises as a moment of transformation opportunity. So my particular suggestion and recommendation to business and the business sector is really to start finding those new complex forms of cooperation which they perhaps wouldn't have done before. And um, perhaps we, we're thinking of partnerships purely in terms of government and business. And gov if government and business work better together, I think that's very, very important. And um, around the world, public-private partnerships are 
are the bedrock of how society transforms and how challenges are solved. But perhaps it's also around businesses engaged with academia, you know, how many of them are, are funding, are jointly cooperating um, in terms of the water challenge, how many of them are, are providing innovation uh, funding to, to NGOs and to, uh, to new businesses, how many of them are sort of incubating this within their own businesses, be they an environmental business or you know, an infrastructure business in general. And then more importantly, the cooperation of businesses with each other is going to be quite important because within precincts, within, um, within central business districts, within downtowns, uh, you know, do all businesses simply sort of retire and wait for government to come up with solutions? Or do they band together within their particular zone and start to find what works and what becomes more affordable, what becomes more feasible when 10 to 15 big and medium-sized companies tackle the challenge together and put in that infrastructure um, or invest in that new forms of sort of uh, water mitigation and water reduction strategies which in the long term benefit all the businesses. So I think it's, it's, um, it's the new kinds of collaboration which are a bit complex, a bit unusual, uh, which plant the seeds for that, that sort of resilience of business to, to the environmental consequences that we will see in the coming decades.